Hello. Today's book is Richard Wright's The Man Who Lived Underground. Uh, yeah, the man, it's a novel. And it also has an essay, uh, what I learned from my grandma, my grandmother, uh, attached to it. And um, <clears throat> what we have here is a story of a uh, black man in, um, well, somewhere. It seems like he's in a city, yeah. And uh, he works at a house in the rich neighborhood, apparently. And the people next door have been murdered. The couple have been murdered by a hatchet, an axe murder. So uh, it's a, you know, a horrible crime. And he's walking home from working with the money in his pocket from his pay. And he gets uh, accosted by the cops who accuse him of the crime and uh, decide that he's the one. And... Uh, Oh, they take him into the station house and beat him up, um, quite brutally torture him in order to uh, get the confession, which they do get because they're torturing him and beating him up. So he signs the paper, you know, of course, why not? Uh, and um, in the explanations at the end are uh, one, of, one of the, uh, maybe it's by... Malcolm, uh, Malcolm Wright, the grandson. <clears throat> anyway, at the end of the book, um, there is an explanation of why this was not published in 1942, but in fact, uh, you know, uh, six, 70 years uh, after the uh, death of the uh, writer. I mean, he died in 1960, and um, so this book was uh, written in 1942, and when he submitted it to his publisher, they didn't want to uh, publish it. And one of the reasons given in the other text in this book is that uh, they didn't, the publisher did not like the way it uh, depicted the uh, actuality of the uh, police uh, brutality in this, uh, you know, third degree uh, business of them beating, um, beating him up. <clears throat> of course, well, now we know that that's just sort of routine and it's in all kinds of TV shows and, uh, you know, I guess, I don't know, but uh, I, don't, I don't believe that uh, police officers are qualified to... Uh, extract confessions from people by uh, torture. Uh, I don't think they're going to get the actual confessions. So, um, he, he uh, is accosted by his police. He's in the police station. Oh, his wife is pregnant. He's very concerned. He's a young man uh, with a young wife, and she is pregnant. So, uh, and of course, uh, uh, they go... Uh, Somehow the cops are being nice to him and like they take him around to uh, visit some things. Uh, they take him to the crime scene and show him the crime scene, which he's just shocked by because it's not his thing. And, you know, it's all bloody room and all that. So um, <clears throat> and then they take him. They're being nice for some reason. I don't know. They take him to his uh, wife. Um, to see his wife and of course he's been out all night and she's like what what happened you know she's worried sick and in bed and it turns out this is the time so uh so the cops uh carry her down the stairs and put her in the cop car and take her to the hospital where she's going to deliver uh the birth of his uh of their child um their first child uh, but in the meantime, uh, the cop leaves him sitting in the bench there in the uh, hallway, whatever, of, of the hospital. And uh, he has to go to the loo, the bathroom, so the restroom. So uh, he gets up and um, while the cop is away, uh, our, uh, our guy, uh, Freddie is his name, Freddie Daniels, uh, Freddie uh, escapes. He, he jumps out the window in the hospital 
and uh, then he doesn't know what to do, and it suddenly starts raining, and he sees um, the uh, uh, a uh, somehow the the drain sewers, or storm drains, or whatever, are surging. So he sees a um, um, manhole cover uh, go up, forced up by the water, which is of course a lot of water force in order to do that so he gets somehow he gets the notion of going down into the manhole so the rain uh, slows down he lifts the manhole and climbs down into the manhole and thus begins uh, his life underground as it is <clears throat> now this is where the story kind of shifts out of the realism part into like you know he sort of becomes this other character really um he stops worrying about his wife uh he is a honest uh, church going uh young man uh previous but uh now he's all, all of a sudden he's a um he's um larcenous <laughs> Uh, in his basement uh, travels, in, in, in the uh, sewer travels, he ends up in various basements and sees things going on. Actually, he witnesses two other crimes. So, yeah, there's a lot of unrealistic things going on here. The happenstance that he would happen to be in the basement while he's witnessing this crime. So all, it all just goes, you no. Know, so so if, you're, you know, if, you're, if you're worried about realism at this point, you'll go, wait a minute. He's down in the sewers, then he's in the basements, and he's, it's at night, but, but then he thinks it's okay at night to like chop through bricks and get through into the other basements and all. It, you can't really do that in the city. You can't, you can't dig around in the basement at night and bang around and try to get, because people would hear it. Because the, the night is quiet and... Uh, in buildings, sound travels up through the buildings quite easily. I tell you that as an urban person, especially when you're dealing with the structures like that. When you're like, look, they were when they were renovating upstairs. Of course, I could hear it all the time. Even when they were renovating across the hall upstairs, I could hear it all the time. So, so that didn't seem realistic to me. He uh, he sees someone stealing some money from a safe. Uh, oh, he thinks he can he can get the combination of the safe because he sees somebody getting into you know through a keyhole or something or a little hole. He's seen uh, somebody uh, do a combination lock in a safe, so he gets the idea that he can watch this from some distance away, an opposite wall, uh, and uh, determine what the uh, combination is. And of course, that happens. But then he's going to steal the money, but then he sees somebody else steal the money. So he sees somebody stealing money and shoving it up their sleeve. Uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, so he, he ends up going into, the, uh, into that building and uh, opening the safe, you know, which is basically impossible to, from across the room with someone's hand covering it to uh, watch the combination being... Uh, being done with someone standing in front of it, looking closely at it. But anyway, that's what we're uh, supposed to uh, accept in this unrealistic story, as I said. So uh, <clears throat> he gets all this money and, you know, he's not going to spend it. He says he's not going to spend it. And he takes it down and he finds some glue and he starts gluing it onto the walls of uh, like $100 bills. He glues it into the wall, onto the walls of a basement or sewer or wherever he is. He also sees a, uh, comes upon a jewelry store and uh, into the basement of a jewelry store where the night watchman is sleeping. So he steals all this stuff from the jewelry store, all these watches and diamonds and all this other uh, jewelry store stuff. Um, and there's a couple of interesting quotes that come up in this part that I'd like to read. Uh, to you about the watches and the jewelry. He held the watches and heard their awful ticking, and he hated them. These watches were measuring time, making men tense and taunt with the sense of passing hours, telling tales of death, 
crowning time, the king of consciousness. I thought that was a, a, a good line. Um, and another good line that comes uh, some other time here, like, uh, okay, mm, um, they feel they've done something wrong. Oh, this is about the religious people. Also witnesses a church going on. He, he looks through the, through the uh, uh, and sees a church happening. And this is connected to his uh, this grandmother story because uh, in the grandmother story, he talks about his grandmother being uh, completely re uh, religious, being seven day Adventist and um, how it was oppressive to him as a kid to have, you know, you couldn't, uh, you couldn't read books if he went to the library and got books. If he got some other books, his uh, grandmother would burn the books. So um, yeah, no books except for God, um, that kind of thing. So um, in regarding the, the, the church and watching these religious people, he says, um, they felt they'd done something wrong, he whispered in the lyrical dark. He felt that their search for a happiness they could never find made them feel that they had committed a great wrong which they could not remember or understand. There's a, uh, a thing about guilt in this uh, story um, and about, you know, okay, so, so all these unrealistic things go on and, you know, I'm like, oh, well, you know, I, I, I don't really think this is the same guy that started out in the story. So after reading the essay uh, where he describes, Richard Wright describes what his intention was and, and the influences of the story, uh, turns out surrealism is, was one of the influences. And, and he's taking this as a sort of a, a hyper real surreal story about this this um, this guy who could, gets caught up in this crime uh, situation with, that he did not commit. Um, so he, uh, you know, he he uh, Richard Wright in in reality uh, took off to uh, Europe, and actually Malcolm in the end of in the uh, on the uh, Malcolm Wright, who is the grandson, uh, who was two thousand. Uh, in, 20, in 2021, he was uh, 43 years old, 46 years old, something like that. Anyway, in his 40s. And he's writing from Europe where he lives. And, you know, he, he, he's grateful that his uh, grandfather got them out. So he, he went to uh, France and became a citizen of France and raised his family as his children there and, uh, you know, get, helped them to escape the uh, violent prejudice of America for the uh, softer uh, prejudice against black people in, um, in France. So, uh, yeah, so, so the essay is to explain the story or, you know, is connected to the story in, in the book. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I didn't quite get it. He also, you know, he also brings up Plato and uh, one of his dialogues and uh, something to do with that. And, um, you know, um, Native Son is a great novel. Uh, this one is not so great. Apparently it was a, from a short story or there was a short story version that was published in some time ago in Eight Stories or something like one of his other books. But uh, yeah, this one um, is the novel version. And, uh, you know, here that it's published, uh, whatever, you know, 70 years after the death of the writer, and, you know, you can kind of see why that it's just, it's not up to, uh, it's, it, you know, I could see what he's trying to do after it's explained to me, but it just didn't, I, uh, it's over my head, I guess, under my head. Uh, inaccessible to me because of my experience. I don't know. But uh, that was my experience of reading Richard Wright's The Man Who Lived Underground. And I appreciate you watching and please like and subscribe. Bye-bye.